Okay, this is going to be my review and thoughts on episode four, an oval, for, an oval for Charon. So I really have enjoyed these episodes this year a lot more than I enjoyed them last year. I know Discovery screwed up like they didn't care about the fan base, but it really seems to me that they're fixing it. Every episode has something new where they're fixing it. They're listening to the fans. They're trying to kiss our butts, you know. They can see that they've screwed up real bad. They fix the Klingons. Oh, yeah, wartime's over. We can grow our hair back. I guess they borrowed the uh, uh, hair generation device from the Orville, where, where Bordis grew his mustache. So anyway, uh, they've, they've corrected the spore drive. They're going to do away with it, I'm sure, and say, oh, no, it can't be in Starfleet. Uh, that's why we've never heard of it. Because it's destructing the universe, you know. And uh, uh, we can't use a holographic uh, simulation to, to communicate because it screws up real bad. So that's out. And uh, uh, nice uniforms from the Enterprise. Yeah, they're new, right? And all these kind of things. Uh, now, the first episode of this season, they came in and it's... Uh, introducing us to what's going to happen this season. And the second episode, where they found the planet of people, was where uh, Jonathan Frakes directed it. That was awesome. That was It got everybody excited. felt like real Star Trek, because Frakes directed it, and he did a real good job with that one. And then The Point of Light, I liked it. I thought it was fine. They did have a lot of stuff crammed in there, but they're still heading in the right direction. It felt bad because they showed the Klingons, but the Klingons were actually speaking English. They adopted the uh, technique of speaking in Klingon and then moving to English for convenience. It's obvious. Uh, they've just fixed in everything they possibly can. They're trying to salvage this series, so let's give them a chance. I rewatched the first and second episodes just now. They were awesome. I really enjoyed them. I'm a big Star Trek fan. I would rather have Star Trek than not have Star Trek. When the 2009 movie came out, I didn't like it that much, but my wife loved it. And she said, look, we're going to have Star Trek. It might be in an alternate universe and different, but it's still Star Trek. And that's the way I feel about this. Now, we found out due to Midnight's Edge reporting and investigating and putting one, two, and three together that, yes, this is actually an alternate universe. So being in an alternate universe it makes me enjoy it more because I know they're not just totally disrespecting us. They're creating this alternate universe. You know, it has to be 25% or more different than the original Star Trek because it's under the J.J. Abrams bad robot license and all this stuff. That makes perfect sense. So all of this is the Star Trek universe if the 2009 movie incidents destroying Vulcan and destroying Romulus had happened, this universe was created. That's that's basically the where they're going. That this is the prime Star Trek due to that occurrence of the movie, 2009 movie. I accept that. We can't have the same thing from 50 years ago forever. we got to move on to the future someday. So anyway, this episode, I really enjoyed it. I couldn't wait to start it. I watched the Orville. No, I didn't. They didn't show the Orville this week. So I, but I've gotten used to watching the Orville and then watching Star Trek Discovery. It's awesome. We got two Star Treks on the air basically right now. It's sort of like the 90s. You know, we're reliving the heyday right now of Star Trek. So I think we should keep it going. I don't think we should disrespect and dish Star Trek Discovery. Yes, it's STD. Right. That's retarded that they named it STD. Well, you know, these guys that wrote this originally, they weren't really Star Trek fans like we are, so they didn't think about it like that. It's just, it's, just, it's just the way it worked out. But I think they're getting their shit together. I think they're fixing as much as they can, and they're trying to deliver as good episodes this season. So I say we give them a chance, and I say as many people pay for CBS All Access as they possibly can. I'm paying for it. There's no reason to keep hating on it. We've hated on it as much... And as much as possible, as much as we needed to, we hated on it. And now they're fixing things. I think they got the message. I think CBS got the message. They own all of Star Trek. Watch that Midnight's Edge video. It's awesome. 
They own all of Star Trek, but they have to make it different than the original Star Trek. And they also want to bring in new fans and hold them for the future of Star Trek. This Picard series is going to be like in the Abrams universe, in this universe. It's going to tie the old prime universe with this universe of J.J. Abrams in some way. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Everything that's happening is interesting. We have two Star Trek shows on the air. Let's enjoy them. Thumbs up on this episode. It felt like Star Trek. They encountered a big problem. They solved it with Starfleet, you know, uh, procedures and all that stuff. Excellent episode. Every episode this year has been excellent, including number three, Point of Light, which everybody hated. But they only hated it because of instinct, because the Klingons, the Klingons put them on a bad mood. But they actually fixed it, the Klingons. They got hair. They're speaking English. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of, a lot of repair. A lot of, uh, you know, kissing our asses. That's right. Just keep kissing our asses, CBS. Good job. This is Trek Genius uh, reporting on Star Trek. Episode 4, did like it. Make your comments below. Make sure you subscribe. I need more subscribers, and uh, I'm hopefully going to get monetized again pretty soon. Uh, live long and prosper.